What's up guys, Dan Forlani here and welcome back to a new video. If you're new to this channel, there's one thing you need to know. I make videos with and about the Canon 90D, the Canon EOS R, the Canon R6 and the Canon M50, which is the one I'm using right now. What am I gonna talk about in this video? Well, I've been shooting a lot with my Canon EOS R, Canon 90D, but most of all with my new Canon R6. And I realized I haven't made any video with the Canon M50, not recently. So here it is. I'm actually using it right now with a kit lens, the 15 to 45 millimeters at 15 millimeters, which on this crop sensor camera, it's crop times 1.6. So at 15 millimeters, it corresponds to at 25-ish millimeters, something like that. And I'm in a corner of my studio, in my office, and this is where I edit my videos, my photos, where I do my magic, my creations. <laughs> And I'm using my studio lights, like the Godox SL60W here, my rim light over there, up there, and a bunch of LEDs. Now I'm shooting in 1080, mostly because on um, the Canon M50, when we shoot in 4K, there is a major crop. Plus, we lose the dual pixel autofocus. There is a different kind of autofocus, and it's contrast based and kind of sucks. So far, what do you think about it? Leave a comment down below, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already and check the links in the description to see all my gear stuff and things, my gear. Now, the maximum aperture of this lens is f3.5 and if I zoom in, it only gets worse because it goes immediately to f4, f4.5, and when I put it at 45 millimeters is f6.3 and it gets darker, of course. Let's go back to 15. Now, is this the best quality we can get with this camera? We can try to shoot in 4K, but besides that, considering the drawbacks of shooting in 4K with the Canon M50 or the Canon M50 Mark II, we'd better stick to 1080. And this is the best quality we can get with a kit lens at 15 millimeters. This is the 4K 24 frames per second. Now, I made this video to show you this camera with a better lens, actually a much better lens. This. So I was wondering what's gonna change if I use this lens on this tiny little camera, this tiny entry level camera. I haven't tried it before, I promise. This, this is gonna be a surprise for me too. I mean, whatever the results. So now we're gonna see if it's completely true. Uh, the thing they say that the final quality of the footage or the photo is determined by the lens, not by the camera. Well, I don't know about that. Let's put it in a different way. Let's see if this awesome entry-level camera is able to produce some very high quality footage if we use an L lens or a very good lens and check out my other videos where I use the Canon M50 with different lenses EF and EFS like here so now I'm gonna put this lens the Canon EF 16 to 35 millimeters f 2.8 on this Canon M50 now and here it is the maximum aperture maybe is giving me some shallow depth field tiny little bit maybe for sure a little bit more than the uh, the kit lens because that was at 3.5 this is f 2.8 so maybe a tiny little bit more again let me know what you think about it leave a comment down below and hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already and <laughs> check the links in the description to see all my gear stuff and things my gear i uh, didn't mention to be able to use this lens ef lens but also all other lenses like ef and efs lenses on my canon m50 i use an adapter and checking the links to see which one now this is in 1080 24 frames per second maximum aperture f 2.8 
let's see what happens if I use the speed booster. What's a speed booster? Well, the speed booster is an adapter through which we can adapt EF lenses, not EFS lenses, EF only. On the Canon M50, the field of view, which is cropped times 1.6, is multiplied times 0.75. So the field of view increases a little bit more. I'm gonna try it right away. One second. Right now I'm using the Canon M50, but with the speed booster. Before I was using a regular adapter and this allows me to use EF and EFS lenses on the Canon M50 and the Canon M50 Mark II, but the speed booster increases the field of view and also increases the maximum aperture of the lens. In fact, before I was at f2.8 and right now is f2 so we can get a little bit more shallow at the field leave a comment down below hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already let me know what you think about it uh, another good thing about this lens is that unlike the kit lens that it has a maximum aperture of a 3.5 and when you zoom in the aperture gets even worse like a 4 a 5 a 6.5 this lens this doesn't happen if i zoom in it states f2.8 in this case since i'm using the speed booster it will stay at f2 if i so desire man i didn't see that i could go even wider look i thought that was already at 16 millimeters but i wasn't I was indeed when I was shooting with the regular adapter and the field of view was so much tighter, but look at it now. I mean, it's so much more than before. Well, since it's so wide, what I'm gonna do now, even though, even though I don't like the fact that we lose the dual pixel out of focus, but still, I want to see the 4K, because I guess the speed booster provides me with a great solution for the crop at least. One second. And here it is. It's the Canon M50 with the EF 16 to 35 millimeters F2.8 with a speed booster, so F2.0 at 16 millimeters in 4K. So let me know what you think about it, leave a comment down below, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and check the links in the description to see all my gear stuff and things, my gear. Alright, so the field of view improves a lot. Even in 4K we're able to get some decent framing, like if we use the kit lens we can't use a speed booster. And if you use another lens, EF lens, and we use a regular adapter, we don't improve the field of view and not even the maximum aperture. But with the speed booster, we get some awesome results. Look at this. Why did I make this video? Well, just to show you, and I was really curious to see what this lens looks like on the Canon M50, if it's true that if we use uh, some awesome lens on this tiny little camera, this tiny entry-level camera, we can get some awesome results. So I wanna hear from you, let me know what you think about it, because what I've seen so far is from the LCD screen. I still have to edit it and I still have to check, I still have to verify if it's true or not. Uh, I strongly believe that this lens on this camera looks so much better than the kid lens. I'm not suggesting that you should buy this lens if you own a Canon M50 because, I mean, this lens, if you buy it new, it's about uh, $1,500, $2,000. I don't know exactly, but it's a pretty expensive lens. And even though you can get it used for about $700, $800, and why would you do that if this camera, the Canon M50 or the Canon M50 Mark II costs something like uh, 700, 750 bucks in a pack that maybe includes also the kit lens. Hmm. Well, choices. I don't know. Honestly, I wouldn't do that if I only had the Canon M50. But since I happen to own this lens, 
because I bought it for my Canon 90D and I use it also on my Canon EOS R and Canon R6 and I also have a Canon M50. I just wanted to try it and show it to you. If you own another camera, like a more expensive camera, let's say not an entry-level camera, I strongly suggest that you buy this lens and so that if you also have a Canon M50, you can use it on it. So maybe this video, this lens with this camera, it's an exaggeration, but maybe we have seen one thing that even on an entry-level camera, even a, on a budget camera, the maximum quality, like its maximum quality for let's say 70% or even more, depends on the lens, not on the camera. Of course, this might be true for what concerns the Canon M50. So that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button right now and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.